But the prime Grumman support responsibility was the detailed, painstaking creation of a corps of trained Iranian personnel who would in time become the masters of the high technology airplane, even though most of them had only a high school education and no particular background in any of the various technologies that come together in the F-14. In the manual mode, and then we can stow the switch and put the cover back on. Here then, at Qatami Air Base just outside Isfahan, the Iranian Air Force began the journey toward mastery of the Grumman F-14 Tomcat Air Superiority Fighter Interceptor, an airplane of all climes and all seasons, built to the pounding rigors and strains of hard carrier landings, and equally adaptable to the driest of dry land, a harsh desert scape of southwestern Asia. An airplane good enough to spot and track an enemy far beyond the range of any other fighter's radar. Good enough to send six missiles against six targets while tracking 24 other targets at the same time. Targets dozens, scores, even a hundred and more miles away. Good enough, in short, to defeat any threat from any other fighter, from any supersonic bomber, from a cruise missile itself from near feet above the sea or the land to 100,000 feet, nearly 20 miles above the Earth. But the airplane, the visible, tangible hardware itself, would be incomplete without the invisible, intangible human aspect that goes with it. Understanding, mastery of aircraft, as indeed of all technology, must begin with the basics. But even the basics, at this upper exacting level of technology, are a collective challenge of a high order. The one word that sums up the thousands of parts that must function as separate systems in this single flying and fighting airplane is maintenance. Maintenance for the airframe itself, and for the thousands of moving parts that must perform precisely and instantaneously on command of the men who fly the airplanes and for the computerized radar, navigational and weapon systems, the pilot and the weapon systems operator deploy in flight and in combat. We try to get as many people qualified as we can so we can show that eventually they're going to take over all aspects of the job. The goal that we have is we're trying to work ourselves out of a job. The goal we had was to work ourselves out of a job but not just in maintenance training. Also in training the pilots and the weapon systems operators, the two-man crews who take the F-14s aloft on their missions. There is a lot, not simply to learn, but to master down to the ultimate detail. Given the challenges of flight itself, especially in combat, what you learn here has to become second nature, which is something more, something far more profound than simply learning the facts. The background of the Iranian pilot is either from F-5s or F-4s. The average flight time is approximately 800 hours, some with as many as 2,000 hours in the F-5. A typical mission will comprise a two-ship flight, and that, of course, would be four people. The brief for that mission will ordinarily start about two and a half hours before flight time. The brief will last about an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. We fly for approximately an hour and 45 minutes. A two-ship flight would take off individually, rendezvous about 100 miles southeast of the base. We have familiarization flying, uh, basic instrument flying, uh, cross-country flying, uh, radar intercept flying, basic fighting maneuvers, gun air air gunnery. And we have four in-flight refueling flights for each student. We have a number of IIF instructor pilots, NWSOs. 
There is always an instructor pilot in the front seat of an airplane there that, that there's a student WSO in. We would approach one another using the radar and using the tactics that we've been taught. Then we would break up again and switch roles. One would be the fighter, the good guy, and the other one would be the bad guy, the, uh, the defensive one. Having done that for about 25 to 30 minutes, we would rendezvous again. We would come back as a flight of two and a VFR or instrument uh, approach. We'd then go back to the squadron area, take off our overflight gear, and then go back to the briefing room and debrief the flight. Tell the student what he did right and what he did, what we think he did wrong and what can be done to correct it. The debrief is probably the most important portion of the flight. And the F-14 is a fine weapon system and they can handle it. And they're going to get better as the time goes on. It's going to whip up and whip down and possibly hit the aircraft. That's one thing to remember. Okay, and the second thing we want to remember is the skip roping effect. Once you've made contact with the basket and start pushing the hose up, on the left side especially, on the left side of the tanker, you're going to get this skip roping. And once you see it developing, you have to immediately correct for it and by hitting the left rudder. Skid the aircraft over this way and make the line taut and it'll stop the skip roping. If you don't do that, what's going to happen is it's going to get worse and worse and worse and could snap off the probe.